Hey, what's up? It's Evan from photoextremist.com. Today, we're going to be talking about ultraviolet induced visible fluorescence. If we take a look at the electromagnetic spectrum, we can see that visible light is on that electromagnetic spectrum, even though it's a very small portion of it. And visible light contains wavelengths of light between 400 nanometers and 700 nanometers. Visible light is what we can see and detect with our eyes. The subcategories of visible light are red, blue, green, yellow, stuff like that, violet. The more we go towards the violet range, the wavelengths of light get shorter and shorter and higher frequency, higher energy. So then we get into the ultraviolet category, which consists of UVA, UVB, and UVC. Now those range between 100 nanometers and 400 nanometers. And then remember visible light is 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers. So the main type of ultraviolet light that I'm gonna be talking about in this video is UVA because it's the most popular and it's the most safe. Fluorescence refers to the process where when a light wave of a particular wavelength hits a material object, the material object will absorb some of that energy and some of the energy is lost during that process. You could have a light wave of 400 nanometers hit the object, but then because it loses energy, uh, it could come back out at say 450, 500, whatever, and then it hits your eye. So there is some material that does exist where if you shine a blue light on it, it'll re-emit green light. That's what a lot of divers experience when they go underwater to photograph those fish and stuff. That's actually most likely that's probably more blue induced green fluorescence. So it's pretty cool. Fluorescence is, is a broad thing. You can have visible induced infrared fluorescence if you wanted to. Uh, you could only record that with an infrared camera though since our eyes cannot see infrared. Guess what? All material absorbs and re-emits ultraviolet light at different rates. You could have a white bottle, a white mug, a white wall, uh, and a white table, and all of these objects will be different colors when shining UV light on it. This object might be a little bit more purple, this object might be a little bit more green, the wall might be black. So how would that happen? That happens because whatever gets re-emitted back out must be longer than or equal to what was shined on it. So if you shine a 400 nanometer light wave onto an object, 400 nanometers can be uh, re-emitted back out, or it could be 420, 450, whatever. That's why when you shine an ultraviolet light onto maybe say white paint on a wall, you will see absolutely nothing. That's because what's being re-emitted back out would only be ultraviolet light, which is invisible to our eyes. We can't see it. There might be experiments and certain people that can, but I don't believe I can see it. From what I know and from what I can experience thus far, I can't see ultraviolet light. You can't see ultraviolet light, you can only see the byproduct of ultraviolet light, which is fluorescence. This is a tungsten light bulb by General Electric. Don't get it, it doesn't emit any ultraviolet light at all. It's just a purple light bulb, basically. This is a fluorescent tube. It does emit a little bit of ultraviolet light, but it also emits quite a bit of violet light, visible violet light. So yes, certain things will fluoresce and glow a, a little bit with this. Not that much, but if this is all you have access to or if this is all you can afford, then you can get this and use it. However, I would only use this if you're photographing things that, are, that fluoresce very, very brightly to begin with like ne certain neon material that's very, that glows very brightly. If you're photographing other material that doesn't glow as bright, such as leaves, plants, dirt, things like that, you're going to want a bright, true ultraviolet light source. There's a better version of this for about 20 bucks by American DJ. They've created a light, it's like a long tube for $20. It emits a little bit more ultraviolet light than this does and a little bit less violet light than this does. So the ratio is a little bit better. UV LEDs, again, it emits a lot of purple visible light and it does emit some ultraviolet light, but not that much. Any glowy effect that you wanna get 
um, it's going to be washed out quite a bit by the violet light. Now, if you want to get a very high quality ultraviolet light source, there's a flash you can get for about 20 bucks off of eBay called the Canon 199A flash. I'll link, leave a link in the description so you can check it out. You're going to want to unscrew those two screws and then there'll be this Fresnel lens in there. This blocks UV light, so we need to take this out. So do whatever you need to do to take it out. Use a tool or just pry it out with your fingers somehow, but be kind of careful so you don't ruin the reflector that it's attached to. Then this reflector will be kind of popping out of the flash, so kind of tuck it back down underneath the black plastic rectangular rim, tape it down there so it doesn't pop out, so it's nice and sturdy there. Next, usually the Canon 199A flash will come with a black rectangular plastic frame with a diffusion panel in that frame. Pop the diffusion panel out, toss it aside, and replace it with a filter set and the link to this filter set will be down below in the description. This contains a filter that blocks infrared light and a filter that blocks visible light. So only ultraviolet light is going to go through this filter. And this is peaked at, I believe, around 365 nanometers, which is very good. So just pop that in there, tape them together, and then pop it in there. It'll stay. There's your filter, and then you pop that on. Bam, UV only flash, just like that. Your own black light, it's very high quality. This does not emit any visible violet light. It's very, very good. And if you don't use the filter, this flash emits infrared light, visible light, and ultraviolet light. It's a full spectrum flash. Now the filter set costs about $200. However, you could maybe get that cheaper by trying to get just the U340 filter only without the IR blocking filter. But I wouldn't really do that, I would get both. You can then pop this on your camera and you now have your own UV camera. Now, when you take pictures with this, start at a high ISO number. So you set your camera to a high ISO um, because this flash does not even, it's not that powerful, but it's the best one available I could find for the price and for the size and everything. The other one you can get is a UV LED torch. This is called the MTE-303. This does emit visible violet light, but a lot of ultraviolet light. So you can unscrew this cap and then put one filter in there. It's, it's the Hoya U340 filter. It blocks visible light and only lets ultraviolet light in. And there you go, you have a high quality light source it's bright, although they will hopefully start making these brighter. I would ideally love to light paint an entire tree and an entire landscape in UV only light. I think that would be very cool. This isn't really capable of doing that that well. But yeah, those are the two light sources, the MTE-303 UV LED torch and the Canon 199A flash with the filter set. You will also want to definitely filter the MTE-303 as well. There is another step to this though. Because most camera sensors can actually see and record and detect ultraviolet light, visible light, and infrared light, some of the invisible ultraviolet light that is coming out of your light source can actually be recorded by your camera. And we don't want that. We only want to record the visible light. So we need to eliminate ultraviolet light and infrared light from entering into the camera lens. Many cameras have a UV IR blocking filter right in front of the camera's sensor, and it does a good job. On my Nikon D810, I would say it does a good job, and I'm pretty satisfied with the results as far as I can tell. However, depending on your camera, the UV IR blocking filter that's in front of your camera sensor may not really be that strong. So you need to put a UV IR blocking filter in front of your camera lens in order to only allow visible light to enter into the camera. Now there are different UV IR cut filters available. Those will all be down below in the description. So those are the three steps to successfully take an ultraviolet induced visible fluorescent photograph per definition. Step one would be to eliminate all visible lights 
in the area. So if you're photographing something in a room, turn all the lights off. If you're photographing something outside, make sure the moonlight is not overpowering your ultraviolet light. That's it. Step two is to use an ultraviolet only light. Get a flash or a torch and then filter it. Step three would be to filter your camera lens to eliminate any ultraviolet light or infrared light from entering into your camera lens. Ultraviolet light does harm your eyes over time. You will need to wear safety glasses uh, whenever using an ultraviolet light source. You can get these, five to fifty dollars, whatever they cost, I don't know how much they cost, there'll be a link down below. Um, these block UVA light, and I know they block UV light because when I shine my UV torch through this, there are no fluorescent effects coming out from the other side. Also, if you shine a UV light on these glasses in a dark room, they appear to be black. No light is being able to get through there. Now, some prescription glasses uh, might be able to block some UV light. However, it's not very reliable. Plus, the light can get through on the sides of your eyes as well. So goggles are really the best form of protection available. You can also protect your skin if you think that you're going to be using these ultraviolet light sources for a longer period of time. You can get something that protects your head and your hands if you want to. Also, you should never ever look directly into an ultraviolet light source. That is very, very bad. This light emits about, I believe it emits about twice as much of UV radiation than the sun does at about two feet away. So you need to be very careful when using these lights. You can't just shine it in people's eyes. Uh, do not do that. Now, if you're going to be photographing a model for an extended period of time, you'll want to make sure that they are adequately protected from these UV rays. So apply zinc oxide sunscreen to any exposed skin and make sure that they have zinc oxide sunscreen on their eyelids as well and only take pictures of them with their eyes closed or with safety glasses on. You can also get hair powder for your scalp, stuff for your lips as well. Now as far as the material of what you can photograph, all, every, everything and anything under the sun. Um, toilet seats can look pretty funky. Rocks and minerals. There's a UV holy powder set available, which is very, very cool. It just becomes like a magical uh, fairy dust. Tonic water glows blue. Trees and plants glow. They may not glow very brightly, but they still do glow and they change color because of the fluorescent effects. And certain leaves, they may glow depending on the age of the leaf or, and how much water and how much sun the leaf is getting. Just some leaf on a concrete on the left, you can see that that's the ultraviolet induced visible fluorescent photo taken with the Canon flash. And on the right is just a regular visible light photo. Here's a comparison between visible, UVA, UVB, and UVC light on this glass cupboard, and then all three combined. Here's the same thing, plates. So, I think that about wraps it up. If you'd like to get more of my stuff, head on over to my website, photoextremist.com, sign up on the email list, and I'll be sending you free ebooks. Also, check out my ebook and video course called Trick Photography and Special Effects. Within that course, you will learn lots of different things. It contains nine hours of video and 300 pages of ebook content that will show you exactly step by step how to create images like this, 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 and this and much, much more is in that ebook. So pick that up, and uh, I will see you in the next video. If you're using UVC, it's a hassle. You need to put gloves on, and you need to make sure that all your skin is completely covered, and you need to wear a face shield and everything. With UVA, uh, <laughs> I personally don't go that far out although you could if you wanted to, and it wouldn't hurt. If you're wondering about UVC and UVB, 
This is a UV light source. It's really heavy. I did mod this. I put a little bar right here with a hole in it so I could attach it to a light stand and it does stay to the light stand. It's a little bit sketchy though. It still works. It's just a little sketchy. <laughs> um, yeah, you have your power switch which turns it on and off with the fan and then you have UVA, UVB, and UVC. The unique thing about UVC is that mirrors and glass become an opaque gold color. You can't see through them. That's about the most interesting thing about UVC. Other than that though, UVC kind of just changes the color a little bit different. I would stick with the UVA. UVC is used to kill microorganisms and it damages your DNA and your skin much faster than UVA does. Just remember that. <clears throat>